Hello friends, this video on neat atoms is brought to you by examfear.com. No more fear from exam. Now let us quickly talk about the absorption and emission spectrum. So by now you have got a fair idea what happens when a photon is absorbed and when a photon is emitted. So here these diagrams will clarify the thought further. So in the first case you see absorption spectrum where an electron jumps from a lower energy level to higher energy level and as a result it absorbs a photon. So in this case the spectrum that is obtained that means the lines which you see where uh, which shows electrons jumping from lower energy level to higher energy level that forms the absorption spectrum. Whereas in the second case where you see that the photons are getting emitted at every process so these lines together form the emission spectrum. So this is how the absorption and emission spectrum look like. So how do we mathematically describe an absorption spectrum and an emission spectrum? So for example, in the absorption spectrum here, the energy at the ground level is E1 and let's say that the energy at the excited state is E3. So we can say that when some additional energy is given to this ground state, now that additional energy is the energy of the photon, then this electron jumps to the excited state, which is e3 so you can say e3 minus e1 is equal to h nu so more is the difference in the energies of the two levels more is the frequency of the radiation so that means if you want to make this electron jump from e1 to e4 so the difference between e1 and e4 is more therefore you need the photons frequency to be more so the frequency of the photon would also be more. So more is the difference, more is the frequency of the photon and less is the wavelength because frequency and wavelength are inversely related to each other. So more is the difference between the energy levels, more is the frequency of the photon and less is the wavelength of the photon. Now if you talk about the emission spectrum, in this case you can say let's talk about this transition from E4 to E1. So here you see that energy at 4, that means E4, when it releases a photon, let's say that it released a photon of energy H nu, then this comes back to the ground state which is E1. So from this also you can say E4 minus E1 is equal to H nu, right? So in this case, like here you see three transitions, right? One is from 4 to 1. So this transition is from energy level 4 to 1, this is from 4 to 2 and this one is from 3 to 1. So these are the three transitions which are taking place. Now out of these, the difference in the energies is maximum in 4 to 1 transition. Therefore, the frequency of the photon emitted will be maximum in this case and the wavelength of the photon emitted will be minimum in this case. So in this fashion, looking at the difference of between the energy levels, you can predict the frequency and wavelength of the photon emitted. Now let us specifically talk about the hydrogen spectrum. So when we look at the hydrogen spectrum, we see that it consists of discrete lines and that is where the concept of the line spectra comes into picture, which Rutherford's model failed to explain and was further and then later explained by the Bohr's model. Now in hydrogen spectrum, we again have two types of spectrum. One is the emission spectrum where we see discrete bright lines in dark background and the other one is the absorption spectrum where we see dark lines in bright background. So basically in both the cases you see discrete lines, right? Now here on the screen you see various names like Lyman, Balmer, Brackett, Paschkin and Pfund. So what are these? So these are basically series which are part of the hydrogen spectra. So in the hydrogen spectra you have series of such lines and each of these series are located in different wavelength range. For example, the Lyman series is located in the ultraviolet region. The Balmer series is located in the visible region. Bracket, Pashkin and Pfund, they are located in the infrared region. So how, how are they located in these different regions? Because they have different range of wavelengths. And there were different scientists who actually discovered these series and that is why these series are named after their discoverers. So we have something called the Balmer's empirical formula which helps us to calculate the wavelength of various series of hydrogen spectra. Now the, this 
formula which is called Balmer's empirical formula because it was uh, deduced by Balmer goes somewhat like this 1 by lambda is equal to r 1 by 1 square minus 1 by n square so this is the empirical formula for Lyman series what happens in Lyman series the lines fall from higher energy level to n is equal to 1 so in this case the value of this n could be anything after 1 n could be 2 3 4 5 6 or anything so from any higher energy level when it falls back to n is equal to 1 these lines they together form the Lyman series and the wavelength for the Lyman series can be calculated using this formula similarly the next series is the Balmer series where the value of n1 is 2 that means all the lines fall to n is equal to 2 therefore the value of n in this case would be 3 4 5 6 onwards so it would be anything beyond 2 next is Pashkin where this is 3 that means everything falls to 3 so this is basically Pashkin and this one is bracket and this is p fine so in this fashion here the value of n could be n could be 4 5 6 onwards anything similarly bracket and p fund right so in this fashion using these empirical formula you can easily calculate the value of wavelength now if you actually calculate the value of these lambda you would see that the lambda for Balmer series it lies in the visible range similarly the lambda for Lyman series it lies in the ultraviolet range and so on so that's about the hydrogen spectrum now let us quickly talk about x-rays now what are x-rays I mean where do you use this term x-ray Many a times when you get a fracture in some part of your body or sometimes you are having severe backache and the doctors advise you to get an x-ray done. And what is that x-ray? When you get an x-ray done, it, it gives a picture of the internal structure of that body part. Right. So what is so special in X-ray that the rays are able to penetrate inside your body and, you know, get an image of it. So how does that happen? So that happens because of the properties of X-rays. So X-rays are very short wavelength electromagnetic waves. They are invisible. You cannot see them. So if you have ever been for an X-ray, you would see that you even see those rays. However, they travel with the speed of light and just like light, they also travel in a straight line. They do not carry any charge. They affect photographic plates. And this is one reason why we are able to take x-rays of different body parts because on the photographic plates you see that impression right so that imp that is possible because the x-rays are able to affect the photographic plates now when you look at the x-ray spectrum it again consists of sharp lines in fact we talk about the klm series of x-rays so what are these different series of x-rays now if we talk about the k series of x-rays it means that if now, how are X-rays produced? Normally, when electrons moving at high speed, they strike a target. So, when they strike a target, the electrons are emitted from the target and as a result, X-rays are also emitted as a result of this process. Now, for K-series, if an electron strikes the target, K-shell, that means K-shell of the target is hit. In that case, vacancy is created in the K-shell because an electron is released from the K-shell. So immediately an electron from some outer shell, maybe L, M or N, jumps to fill that vacancy in the K shell. And as a result, X-ray is emitted. Because we know that whenever an electron from any outer energy level, whether it is L, M or N, whenever an electron jumps to K shell, what happens? The electrons are actually jumping from higher energy level to lower energy level. And as a result, X-rays are emitted. So this is how X-rays are emitted. Now similarly, when you talk about the L-series of X-ray, L-series means the electron strikes the target's L-shell. So that means an electron goes out from the L-shell, 
right as a result vacancy is created in the l shell to fill this vacancy electrons might come from m or n shell and fill that vacancy now the moment this electrons come from higher energy level to the l shell the x rays are emitted so these are called the l series of x rays so similarly you have m series n series and so on and how do we name these lines so the transition which happens from l to k that is called k alpha the next line is k beta the next line is k gamma and so on similarly the first line of l series would be l alpha second line would be l beta and so on so this is how we named the lines on the x ray klm series and the characteristic wavelength depends on the nature of the target material so looking at this energy level diagram you can see that the energy at the k level is greater than l is greater than m and so on and how do you calculate the characteristic wavelength so this the formula is again similar to the empirical formula of uh, the hydrogen spectrum it is 1 by lambda is equal to r z minus b whole square 1 by n1 square minus 1 by n2 square if the transition is taking place from n2 to n1 so here b is a constant and that is why we say that the wavelength that is lambda depends also depends on the nature of the target material Thank you. Please visit examfear.com for free quality education. You can learn with a simple four step learning process wherein you can watch video lessons, you can ask your questions, you can refer notes and you can take a free online test. We have content for class 6 to 12 on physics, chemistry, mathematics and biology along with practical videos. So please subscribe to our channel for daily updates. Thank you.